Ladies and gentlemen, come gather round, come gather round, come gather all round. Today, we're putting some glass in the doors. Hopefully this is going to be fun. Let's go! Parts of this were fun. Not all of it was fun. It was kind of fun like a butt kicking is fun. Mechanically, this stuff was okay, but there's a whole bunch of tediosity here, which kind of puts the FU into fun, and I didn't really enjoy a whole lot of this. First part was getting this all apart and disassembled. You probably don't need to disassemble everything like I did here, but I wanted to paint things and sandblast them and make them nice and shiny and pretty. If you're just replacing seals, you could probably just deal with uh, rivet and screw at the top and not have to undo the rivets at the bottom. But I did, because it made sense to me at the time. Um, the glass on this was all good. There's no chrome on this truck, so that's pretty easy. Uh, and I was just going to try to disassemble it all out. Popped out all of the window setting tape. There is tape that you buy. You measure the width, the inside width of the channel, and you measure the thickness of the glass. You do some math, and you order some window setting tape that matches where you need it to go. Keep in mind, you're going to need to measure the wind wing, the wing window channel and the glass, the door glass surround and the door glass bottom may not all be the same. Uh, so good luck with that. Measure, math, order. Um, that's okay. I wasn't quite sure exactly when I would be getting back into this, so I ziplocked and tagged everything to remember where they are. Most of the rivets I just center punched and drilled out. Uh, they're eighth inch rivets. You get uh, a kit of kind of beat them with a hammer rivets to put it all together, and it works okay. I do have a tool for assembling it that I'll show you a bit later on and stuff that kind of works. The, it looks like this channel, which had felt in it, it's long gone, was kind of, the edges were folded over to hold the felt in place, kind of crimped. Um, but I didn't unfold it or anything, I just sliced it and ripped it out of there. Replacements are just sticky sided tape. This would probably be a good opportunity to tint your windows if you wanted to, because then you wouldn't have to have an edge but you probably wreck the tape trying to do it. I cleaned off all the glass by scraping off the 60 years of schmoo with a bunch of window cleaner and scrubbies and the whole bit and got them fairly nice. The bottom of these are held together with barrel screws, barrel nuts. It's kind of, I'll have to show you a picture of that a little bit later on. Uh, but one of those was missing in mine and the rest of them could, didn't come out so I just drilled them out as well pulling out the glass setting tape here, cleaning off the window. I believe they're tinted, they're just not super dark. It's like your factory tint. It's not clear, we'll put it that way. Filthy though, and these have been sitting um, probably since the truck was ever uh, driven, and then I had the doors disassembled and sitting in the shop for a long time as well. While I'm at it, I'm putting in some door seals. These are push-on from Precision uh, Rubber and they fit nice but they, the doors don't close quite the same with these in place. I like them. There is talk that Honda Civic or Honda Odyssey minivan rubber seals fit perfect and fit the uh, they make the doors latch properly. I'll get back to you if I ever go that route. These are nice, they just you had to adjust the latches a bit. And then we'll put the mirror in. 60 years of crooked. I think I would have straightened that. But I didn't because these are the greatest trucks in the world. Two good coats of epoxy primer on sandblasted window frames. And I think I'll let that cure for a couple days. Um, just to make sure it's nice and tight like a tiger. I didn't show the sandblasting because there's not a whole lot to show with that, um, but we got her pretty nice. Then, this is Dell Fleet uh, by PPG. It's, I want to say it's essential paint, but Dell Fleet, it's the stuff I've been spraying the whole truck with. It's a fleet style paint, high build, 
lots of solids. It's, it's pretty neat. They have mostly industrial colors. They can mix whatever you want. Once you've got the paint on and it's all cured, then they've got these little stainless steel guys that have to kind of wrap around and pinch this divider between the wind vent, the wing window, wing window, vent window, whatever, and uh, the roll-up window, and the kit, you get a kit of beat them with a hammer rivets. And I have a rivet set that's designed for this, but it wasn't entirely satisfactory for me. So really I resorted to using a center punch to get it most of the way flared and then uh, drift punch, drift punch, pin punch, something flat anyways, to kind of sandwich the whole thing together. The black divider is uh, riveted onto the channel with two rivets, and then the rubber seal is rivet, riveted to the uh, black divider with four rivets. Hopefully you don't mess up on any of the rivets and then run out of rivets. This kit also came with hinges, which I don't need for this particular model. Rubber seals went on fairly well. They're a little bit weird on the ends um, where they meet the channel. And you kind of have to tuck them into each other when you're assembling it. Kind of annoying. But a lot of um, window cleaner can help make this thing slippy slide really well. And you can put her together. So I'm checking the fit to see how they look. I was waiting for the window set tape to show up. And then the window set tape showed up. The setting tape is a little weird. It's kind of like, uh, it's it feels a bit like rubber, but it's got kind of an oily sort of thing, like it's a roofing tar product or something. And I'm not sure what the best way is to put this together. I stuffed it in the channel first, gooped everything, and then persuaded it all in with a hammer. It took actually a fair bit of persuasion. I was kind of a little bit nervous about this, but I beat it and beat it and beat it until the thing went together and I think I'm happy with the fit. Then a nice razor blade to cut the overhanging bits off and then you can start reassembling the framework. The top has a rivet that goes in the end and the curved rubber seal has to go behind the flat seal that goes on the channel, if that makes sense. Kind of in the corners of where the vent window has to go, the seal has to go behind the vertical part. A little bit annoying. And then it's riveted into place. Again, with the beat with the hammer rivets. And I confess, um, I cheated here and I used pop rivets for the bottom because I'm not a big stickler for originality and I don't think I'm really going to care. I'm not going to drive this thing and go, oh my gosh, did you use pop rivets to hold your vent windows onto the channel? Uh, that's probably not going to come from you. The window glass itself was interesting. Um, again, not a whole lot of fun with this, but I folded it over. I did cut the corners. The factory service manual way back in the 60s suggests using oil as a lubricant to do all of this. Uh, and I guess the oil, at least the, man, the manual says that the oil is going to soak in and make it kind of swell and stick a whole lot better. So I guess you'd start with something maybe a little on the thin side. Put it all together, the oil soaks in and makes it swell and holds the glass in place, and then you're good. Uh, however, I keep following these YouTube videos and they're like, don't use any oil on this, uh, just use a, gla a glass cleaner. And having done this, I think I would use the oil. I, I need to stop watching other people's videos, I guess. But I got it together, I'm not totally happy with the results, but here it is. Before we get into this too much further, the first thing we're going to do is add some sound deadener. I've got some of this. This is uh, Kill Mat or X Mat, X Mat by Eastwood. I can buy it locally. I had a gift card. There's probably other things that are just as good. Why do you want sound deadener? This is why you want sound deadener. Hear that? like a metal drum. Notice the difference. It's significant. Probably worth it.
The instructions are vague and didn't say exactly how much you needed to use. You don't need to cover every square inch with this stuff. So we're going to get this out of the way because i got to get my arms in there. So we're just going to let that sit, hopefully out of the way. Now I want to degrease this. This is just a uh, wax and grease remover. Uh, <clears throat> just to make sure the goop will stick to something. In theory, there shouldn't be any wax or grease inside this door. I mean, it's been sandblasted, epoxy primed, and then painted. But knowing my luck, something's gone on in there. Maybe some residual spray from a lubricant or just dust from sanding and sanding and sanding and overspray. So it's not going to hurt to clean it up. I got this crazy roller on a stick. I have no idea where I got it from. It might be my fajas. And I'm going to use that to help stick that stuff down and you just roll it all over the place. This is really sticky, sticky stuff. And sorry, there's not a whole lot to watch here, uh, but imagine being inside the door and seeing a roller rolling this sticky stuff all over. I'm putting this part down on the bottom where you see those horizontal beads on the bottom of the inside of the door. Then I'm sticking a full sheet. I believe it's a full sheet. I might be wrong. Pretty sure it is. Uh, full sheet on the outside skin going a couple inches above the crease and then to most of the way down to the bottom. You don't have to fill every piece of the panel. You just need to kind of calm it a little bit so it's not like a big drum. So rolling it all in there to make sure it's good. Makes a significant change. A little piece here because why not? It's easy to get to and convenient. I also put some X mat on the undersides of the door panels. Not shown, but we'll show the door panels at the end of the video. So four years ago, I took the truck apart and apparently didn't make enough notes on how it goes back together. So in putting the other side together, you're going to want something to calm your nerves when you're doing this. In my case, it's rooibos tea for that first mouthful of disgustingness and then it's not quite so bad. You're going to want to be calm. I'd probably recommend calming music. And I'll show you the order in which you need to assemble these doors. So on the passenger door, which I did first, I didn't have tea, but I needed some. And I ended up getting pretty good at assembling the door and then disassembling the door and then reassembling the door and then disassembling the door. This is the window regulator. This spring was broken and found in the bottom of the door. I welded a piece in there to make it work again. You're not really supposed to weld spring, but what could possibly go wrong? This winds it up. That little end fits into a groove channel kind of right there on the other side of the door panel. That just kind of holds everything in place. This is probably a good time to lube everything up. I'm using my favorite penetrant, Move It, which is pretty good. And these are all held together with uh, clutch head screws. Not my favorite, but they still have them. So there we are. I'd probably change them to Allen head at some point, but I didn't. So it'll work. So I'm putting a bit of Never Seize on all the fasteners just in case I'm the next guy who has to go in there. And I probably will be. Don't like drilling out fasteners. This little channel is usually screwed to the bottom of the window. I unscrewed the window from it and pulled the glass out that way. You doesn't have to be. This little guy, don't put him in yet. He goes on the inside of the door panel right there and it stops the window when it comes down from going too far down. It's like a limit. I am going to need it to go lower. So I'm planning ahead. You should do this too. Don't put that in right now. Okay. We will need it later. This is the channel that goes on the latch end of the door. And it notice this little hook thing on the bottom. We're going to need that later. So notice where it is here. It's going to go at the bottom. And this crazy little shield guy helps cover the latch as well. So we're going to feed that in. A couple screws, a little bit of never sees. Tighten it up nice and tight like a toyger. There is really no adjustment on this, so we're good. So this is inside. Okay, there's the channel sitting down there on the jam side. We got the window regulator, got the X mat inside there. Focus, Danielson, focus. You can probably not see the mat 
on the inside of the door panel side, but we could probably stuff the camera in through this hole. Oh my gosh, can we do it? Look, now we're inside a door. That's just adorable. Boo. And you can see a little bit of the kill mat down there, not kill mat, X mat on the inside. Don't mind the oil spots, nobody cares. So you don't have to remove the channel from the bottom of the glass like I did when I disassembled it. It just actually makes it a little trickier to put it back together. You can leave that channel on the glass and stuff it in through the door. In this case, I needed a third hand, so I stuffed them all in the hole just to hold it in place. And then uh, I could screw it up. The glass is going to be disastrously loose and rickety. That's fine. Send it down to the bottom. Then we get the felt for the channel on the wing window. Uh, it comes with three strips of sticky back on it and so I took the center off, not shown, and uh, stuck it in the channel and then I'm going to peel off the side and stick each side on so it's all held in place with sticky tape. It's probably going to be fine. And this worked okay. Really sticky so that's kind of nice. But peeling that all the way through one side and then we'll do the other side. I believe the originals were kind of crimped as the channel was folded, but uh, this is fine. It seemed pretty stuck. Then you're going to spray it liberally with some window cleaner so it slippy slides really nice. I uh, don't think it matters what brand. This is still foam from when I did the windshield and the back windows. Uh, for a bunch of giggles, watch the windshield installing video. Now I'm going to put the glass in 90 degrees to the way it wants to go, trying to carefully get the little crazy bracket down at the bottom. Once that's in, you can kind of redirect it. I'm trying to avoid the existing glass down in the bottom of the window. Then, as you kind of tip it in there, I got my fingers down to the bottom to guide through the hole to make sure that this thing all lines up nice and good. And then just kind of smack her in. These are not precision vehicles by any means. Two lengths of screws. This one, the long one, goes in the top. Short guy goes in the front. There are two long ones for the top, two short ones for the front. So I can screw them up at this point. I don't remember if I show picking the rubber seal out or not. I do have video footage of this. Awesome. A big liberal spray of window cleaner, and I went around the edges with a small... Uh, it's just a pick, a little pick tool. Try not to puncture and perforate the perfect rubber seal while you're doing this. But you should just be able to just coax the seal. It's going to want to be inside. You've got to coax it to the outside. Um, typical of doing windows, apparently. Kind of fun, kind of soothing. Potential to scratch the paint. So be gentle and just persuade that seal up to where you need it to be. Here's the channel. All of this rubber is from Precision. So that's, that's a, a reputable company. So the channel looks and feels pretty much like what I had ripped out of there, although it's healthy. One end's going to go in, and that little clip that I showed you, that has to go into here. It's relatively easy to get there. I'm just going to try and feed it in through the door. Feed it in through the door. There you go, brute force and ignorance. And it just kind of finds the channel that we previously screwed into place and then shove it down. And then I use the uh, window itself to help find its way to the very bottom. Eventually it'll stop moving and it needs to be uh, completely stuck on that bracket down there in the bottom. Kind of like that. You can see the, the gray poking through over top of the channel. And we just shove it in, make sure it's nicely seated all the way in there. Bend it into the corner at the top, and then you want about, I don't know, quarter inch or so of potential overhang on the front, on the leading edge of it. Cut it with some, some tin snips, and then we're going to kind of bend it back so it kind of pushes itself in there tight, just so it's not loose. We don't want it to be loose. So kind of like this. I could probably squeeze a little bit off of there, cut a bit more off of there, but I, I think I'm just going to leave it for now. Now, the felts that go in here 
I did this based on a video I watched on how to do this, and I've since learned don't do it this way, but this is the way I did it because I didn't know any better. In the video I had watched on how to install this, same brand and everything, they kind of pinched the channel going up the back of the door so that these guys could fit. And with a fair bit of cussing and kicking of puppies, we got this to go in. I'm not totally happy with the fitment of it, but it went in. And then you got to try and widen that little pinch that you made back up so the glass goes past. These are the originals, which I found cleaning up afterwards. They've been squished flat in a vise and the felt's been cut off. Do that. That would be so much smarter than trying to follow the video that I showed that I watched previously. Grr. So I didn't show you the other side because then you wouldn't have to watch me throwing tools and swearing and kicking puppies. But you got to watch me do this side, which I'll hopefully do a voiceover so you don't get to hear me swearing. And I'll trim out where I'm kicking puppies and throwing tools. We've got it in. On the other side, parts of it worked really well. On this side, the felt on the bottom is uh, not opening enough to let the window roll all the way up. It would like to go in here, but it's not getting in there. Um, I'm just going to work it for a little while. Seals in. It works, it rolls, the door is a lot more dense with the uh, stuff in it, but it rolls up most of the way until it gets to about there. And then I feel like I'm going to break something, and there will be kicking puppies. <clears throat> but there it is. Yay! Future me. Future me interrupting. I wasn't happy with the way the window didn't seem to roll through this. And since I don't want to be dominated by an inanimate object, I brought out my uh, door panel gap adjusting alignment tool, which is just a homemade slide hammer with this kind of crazy hook on the end of it. I used it for aligning fenders and doors, and I figured, why not put this here? Put three rows of masking tape on the edge so you don't scratch the paint with this. Set that in there with the window rolled down, and then just boom, there it is. I just slowly persuaded this edge out and this edge in. Uh, and that probably also squishes the little seal a little bit better. And now uh, I'm totally happy with the way this window rolls up. It goes all the way up and stops proper. It's sealed right up to the top. And I'm a happy camper. And I hate camping. Carry on! And because I wanted to feel like I had some reasonable success and things are looking good. It kind of appeals to my need for progress. I put the door panels on. There are little felt, not felt, foam rubber seals behind the cranks. Um, you can see white in behind the door pole thing. I don't know what was in there from the factory to hold the door puller, but they were busted, broken, missing, whatever. So I just got some license plate, plastic screw, captive nut things pop them in place, and I'm hoping that it would be enough to pull the door closed. The door is painted in Ford engine gray, and then the dark gray insert is one to three Ford engine gray and black. Uh, I did have to buy one door opener lever, which I have on the driver's side because the one I had was screwed, and I bought two brand new door armrest pullers, which I got in gray and black, and just hoped that they would be a close enough gray and black to match the colors that I did. And they work. I like it. It looks good. Not the back of my head. That does not look good. Or does it? <laughs> not my favorite task, but nevertheless, it's done. So I've got the glass. They roll up, they go. Hopefully we're done that for now. I'm gonna carry on with the wiring, the interior, the fuel system, and the air ride. So, thanks for watching. Take care.